This prescient quote about Ben Franklin, who conducted his famous experiment with lightning almost 300 years ago, describes how he would change the course of history, but it also speaks to a greater truth about human ingenuity. The discovery that lightning was a form of electrical energy that could be harnessed and directed for the advancement of civilization laid the path for a paradigm shift in our standard of living, on par with the discovery and mastery of fire. It led to light bulbs, television, the internet, and ultimately Bitcoin. It's fitting then that the latest innovation in digital money is the Lightning Network. Lightning Network is a way to transact Bitcoin instantly. It enables people to send instant high volume transactions for low fees over Bitcoin. Cheaper, faster, more open, more inclusive, more freedom based payments. The Lightning Network is the solution to Bitcoin's greatest challenge, how to scale a steel strong time chain. We are able to combine the slower moving Bitcoin, which is backed by its mining network, backed by all of this computational energy with an instant transaction network protocols develop in layers and they take a long time because you want to harden that first layer before you add the next layer. Otherwise, you're building castles on the sand. New tech like life is all about trade-offs. Optimizing for one attribute can come at the cost of another. Jeff Booth describes this as the blockchain trilemma. You can solve two of three sides of that triangle. So decentralization, security, or scalability. But you can only choose two of three. Pick two because it appeared that you couldn't achieve all three, and until Lightning, no blockchain had. Bitcoin solved decentralization and security for the first time that humanity has ever seen decentralization and security together. Then it would create a natural free market opening to solve scalability. Because Bitcoin hadn't solved on layer one scalability. The innovation is reliably solving the scalability problem with an optimized layer two technology built on top of the base layer. The Lightning Network allows participants to establish channels with a certain amount of Bitcoin dedicated to Lightning so that micropayments can be conducted directly peer to peer without broadcasting to the slower base chain. But there are some important characteristics of the base chain that make Lightning work. It's, we have to create the best, hardest money first for the layer on top. Yes, Lightning only works because the base chain works. Some of the initial designs of how to increase throughput were like, okay, we'll just add block size and block times. But then the problem is that individual nodes become so hard to run that you basically need to be a data center. You need enterprise grade bandwidth and storage to run a node. You basically turn into Visa. So if you increase that way, that's a problem. The Bitcoin stack has instead gone vertical and said, look, we're going to keep the nodes small. And so you have small blocks, small bandwidth, limited number of transactions. Now we have over 4,000 Bitcoin dedicated to the Lightning Network. Now I realize that this is still a small number in dollar terms, only about $100 million today. But still, the growth has been steady in Bitcoin terms, and the trend is undeniable. For the first couple years of Lightning is very low liquidity. But we've hit kind of a critical mass now where it's quite liquid and the wallet solutions and things like that are pretty good. So even though there's still work to be done, there's still limitations, there's still privacy improvements that can be made, this is a, now a very workable system with a very strong network effect. The rise of the Lightning Network as an ingenious answer to scaling Bitcoin into a useful medium of exchange has actually highlighted the importance of a stable, decentralized underlying asset. The layer one is the foundation for the entire cyber economy. We don't want it to move fast. What we want is immortal, incorruptible, indestructible. That's what you want, integrity from the layer one. Alternative solutions like increasing the block size actually present crippling vulnerabilities to the robust network that has been chugging along for 13 years. As Lynn Alden said, to increase the block size would present huge barriers to entry for average plebs that run nodes all over the world, thereby promoting centralization of the network. There is no banking license required here to enter the Lightning Network. The barriers to entry to enter the Lightning Network are basically nothing. All you need is a laptop and some Bitcoin to dedicate to get started here. Jack Mahler, Strike founder and CEO, describes his company's vision for using the open source Lightning Network for transferring value around the world instantly, at little to no cost, even as he separately believes in the future of the underlying Bitcoin asset. 
That is our thesis. It's a Bitcoin native neo bank in your pocket that's built directly on top of these new monetary networks known as Bitcoin and the Lightning Network. The asset you should use as your savings account, the asset you should protect your wealth and ensure that inflation and the assets around you don't run away from you in expense. But the network can help your everyday life in making and receiving remittance payments and essentially banking yourself through stable coins and this new monetary network. There are 6 billion people around the world that are living in places that don't have access to good financial services. When you buy Bitcoin, you're not just buying Bitcoin. You're buying Bitcoin that is enabled with the Lightning Network now. Every serious player in the Bitcoin industry is involved in Lightning Network because they all believe this is how we scale Bitcoin into an entire monetary and financial system without the use of alternative cryptocurrencies. In other words, fix the money, then send it at lightning speed and fix the world.